Hello and welcome to Carwale and these are seven cars you just can't go wrong with. These cars that were launched or unveiled in 2022. So how did we get to this list? Well, we looked at something called fitness of purpose. Now let me explain. Let's say you take a sports car. Now the purpose of a sports car is to go fast, is to look great, is to sound nice and of course give you that fun to drive factor. Now does it need to transport a family of four comfortably? No, not really because that's not the purpose. But if you look at a family car, then the purpose of that car is to take a family of four, five, six, seven, what have you, in comfort, in safety, and it needs to be easy to drive. It needs to be easy to get in and get out of. It needs to be fuel efficient. Now that is the purpose of a family car. Now these cars that we will list in this video are cars that fit their purpose and they need to be really right on top on the fitness to purpose scale for them to feature here. So with fitness of purpose in mind, these are the seven best cars from 2022. As a hatchback for its price, the C3 can be found lacking. It is comfortable, it is easy to drive, but it just doesn't have enough content or features to justify its price, especially when you look at the competition. But that changes somewhat when you look at the turbo version. Now, it is more expensive than the regular C3 and it still doesn't have enough features to really justify the price. But if you're looking for a fun and fast hatchback, well, that's your real strong only option in that class. And it starts from that engine, it makes almost 110 bhp, it's got almost 200 newton meters of torque and it gets from 0 to 100 in a little over 10 seconds. And when it gets there, it, the way it revs, the way it sounds, all of that comes really comes together uh, to give it that fun hatchback character. And uh, let's not forget that even with all of this, it still remains a comfortable and practical hatchback. And that is why it's on our list. There is a reason that Maruti Suzuki commands over 40%, the highest market share in the Indian car market. And that's because they have been producing cars that have been easy to buy, easy to drive, easy to maintain, easy to live with and fuel efficient. That's what the Indian audience really wants. But are these the most comfortable? Are these the most uh, tech laden? Are these the most feature rich cars? No, they're not. And in fact, even in terms of end cap ratings, they're not as good as their competition. Now the Grand Vitara, especially with the hybrid, fits that mold perfectly. It, is, uh, it has decent street presence, but it is also easy to get in and get out of. It is comfortable, it is spacious, it is practical, and it is easy to drive. Now, uh, compared to other Marutis in the past, it also has more tech on board. And given that it is based on the same platform as the Brezza, it also will have much better crash ratings than we've seen for Maruti small hatchbacks. So yes, if you are looking for a no-nonsense family SUV that works brilliantly in the city because it's got hybrid tech, so it's efficient and easy to drive, well, the Grand Vitara really fits that bill. If there's one thing that comes to mind when I think or look at the Kia Karens is versatility. Now it's not the best looking MPV out there, but I think Kia has tried to give it some amount of SUV cues. So in the flesh, in the real world, the street presence isn't all too bad. But the real story with the Karens is how well it fits into various environments. You throw it in the city, it works well in the city. It's a great car for highway. Uh, even if you take it over really bad roads, it works there too. So if you want to go with your family, no matter where, from the mall to a different city to a place unknown, the Kia Karens fits that bill. And that's not all. Karens is also comfortable, spacious, and in fact, well equipped if you look at the top spec versions, the version that we've had on a long term for almost a year. Plus, it's not just a good family car. It is also great to be chauffeured to work and back. Um, or if you choose to drive it yourself, again, it's not tiring, it's not tedious. Uh, so you can do that uh, by yourself too. So apart from being a versatile family car, it also works as a car that you can live with in the city on a daily basis as well. And it's this versatility 
uh, that the Karen showcases is the reason that it is on our best cars for 2022 list. Now, sedans as a body style clearly is getting more and more unpopular. But if you wanted a quintessential sedan today, uh, a sedan that is nice to drive, it is comfortable, it is spacious, it has the dynamics that you expect uh, from a sedan and the right proportions, well, our pick would be the Honda City, specifically the eHEV, and we'll get to that. Now, you have other newer sedans from, let's say, uh, Škoda, which is the Slavia, and also you've got the uh, Volkswagen Virtus. But if you really want uh, ideal sedan, then the Honda City eHEV still makes the most amount of sense. So why the City then? Well, if you look at the competition, if you look at uh, the Škoda and the VW sedans, well, the cost cutting is quite obvious in those cars which doesn't fit uh, the price that they come at and the price difference between let's say the eHEV and the top spec uh, Škoda or VW is about 2 lakh rupees. So they're all uh, cars that cost over 20 lakh rupees on the road. But with the city, you are guaranteed a much better resale value. And with the hybrid tech plus uh, with ADAS, you've got a car that's, of course, right up there in terms of tech, in terms of safety and the convenience of driving. So, like we said at the beginning, that if you're looking for the ideal sedan in today's scenario, uh, then I think the Honda City eHEV makes the most amount of sense. Now launched in August of 2022, the Tucson costs over rupees 40 lakh on the road. Uh, for the top spec version and for this you get all wheel drive, you've got a diesel, you've got uh, automatic transmission and you've got a car that is pretty well spec. Now when you look at the competition that is available at this price, similar, five seats, you've got the Volkswagen uh, Tiguan and you've got the Citroen C5. Two cars that are very capable in their own way. And then for the Tucson to pack a meaner punch compared to the other two, clearly just sets the context on how good the Tucson is. Now, not only does it have great road presence, it's also spacious, practical and feature laden. Now, this is a premium SUV, which means uh, the premiumness comes from the fact that it has, uh, apart from the features, it also gets ADAS. Uh, which is unique in its class. And then uh, when you uh, look at the SUV bit, it has a very capable, surprisingly capable four-wheel drive system or all-wheel drive system. Just to give you an example, we drove uh, the Tucson um, recently in the winter month, uh, end of November at uh, Srinagar. We went across the Zojila Pass, icy, cold, minus 10 degrees over uh, what, 13,000 feet, and we could see everything around us struggling, uh, even uh, things with snow chains, but not the Tucson, on-road going tires. That's how good the four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive system is on that car. So if you're looking for a premium family SUV, I think with uh, the kind of space it offers, the kind of features it offers, the kind of safety it offers, not to mention the go-anywhere ability with that smart all-wheel drive system, I think it checks that premium SUV badge or three, uh, premium SUV box really well. And that's the reason it's on our best cars for 2022 list. Now the High Cross isn't officially launched yet, but we know everything about it and it's just a matter of the price. Uh, being revealed. We know what the versions are, we know how it drives because we've driven the car, we know it inside and out. But in terms of pricing, we don't really expect Toyota to come out and surprise us with, uh, you know, really aggressive pricing. It will be more expensive than the car uh, it's meant to replace, which is the Krista. But even so, the High Cross, in our opinion, is a big game changer. And it's done that by first taking the Krista formula and turning it on its head. So gone is the truck-based approach, the body on ladder frame. Instead, you've got a car like Monocoque. And what this does is it's given you a car that's uh, 
in terms of safety, it's nicer. It is uh, much more accessible for all sorts of occupants for all three rows. It is also easier or nicer to drive. The visibility is great. And uh, the fact that they've been able to use a hybrid engine, they would still uh, manage to uh, you know, get that running cost under control. So you've got a car uh, that the current, I think, buyers really need. Uh, if you look at tier one, tier two towns, the infrastructure's gotten better, the roads have gotten better. So you don't really need uh, old school hardy uh, SUV or platform, which the Krista was. Now you want something that's more car-like, so it's comfortable overall, it's safer overall. And I think that way Toyota has read this well, and that is the reason that the Innova High Cross, even though it will be expensive, people would still go for it, and not just people who looked at the Innova, but people who are probably looking at SUVs in that class, lower down or little up. So in that sense, it is going to be a game changer. BMW iX is mind-bogglingly fast and agile for something that is so big, so buff, so unathletic. It is unbelievable how good it is dynamically. The responses are so linear. And then you've got a zero to 100 time of just about six seconds. And if uh, you have even the shortest stretches of road and you get on, uh, let's say, the throttle pedal really hard, you will hit. 200 kilometers per hour before realizing it. And all of this without any drama in terms of sound or uh, vibrations. And this really is the future of performance. And given the way it is, I'm completely on board. Plus, beyond its only mother could love odd looks, the BMW iX is in fact quite refreshing and unique. Now, when you step inside, you will see that the way the dash is designed, the way the center console is, even the seats, doors, all of that is very different, very unique from what we've seen BMW produce in its ICE platform cars in the past. And uh, that's courtesy a Bon Electric or an electric only platform that's used for the iX. Plus, given that it costs 1.16 crore or thereabouts, it also justifies or kind of justifies that price by having loads of features and of course safety tech in the form of ADAS and uh, other bits and pieces. Then the crucial bit is that it has a real world range of almost 400 kilometers. So that is huge given the kind of performance it has, given the size of the car. So it can actually work as the only car in the household if you want. And then if you have a DC charger, which ideally you should have because it's already an expensive car, you will be back on the road in about 1.5 hours with 80% charge. Once uh, you run out of juice, you just have to plug in through that DC charger and you will be up and about in just 1.5 hours. So clearly in terms of tech and in terms of usability and of course in terms of performance, the BMW iX is really a unique and I think a wonderful experience. Now these were the seven best cars uh, from 2022. But we had some other launches also, launches that were really significant, launches that really had us, you know, glued to our seats. We really wanted to see them, drive them, and we expected lots from them. Unfortunately, they missed the mark. Not by a big uh, margin, but clearly, they did not make it to the list because they were found lacking, uh, which they shouldn't have. And let's begin with the Mahindra Scorpio N. Uh, it was supposed to replace the Scorpio, but clearly the way the cars come out and in terms of pricing and what it is, Mahindra uh, itself figured that we need to keep the old Scorpio in the market because the new one just doesn't have that same breadth of uh, capabilities to attract everybody. And uh, the main reason I think that the Scorpio missed the mark is because it is seriously overpriced for what it delivers. It's a good looking car, but in terms of quality that you get from the equipment that you have and how the space has been utilized, it just doesn't match up, let's say, its own sibling, the XUV, which is around the same price point. So, 
clearly that's something that uh, Mahindra missed with the Scorpio and that's why it did not make it to our list. Next up we've got the Jeep Meridian. Uh, now we know it is based on the Compass and it was supposed to be a three row version of the Compass but of course Jeep took extra effort and it looks different. And in terms of driving, just like the Compass, the Meridian is great to drive too. Uh, it has a good drivetrain, uh, powertrain option, so that works well. Unfortunately, for the Meridian, for the price that it comes at, it just isn't value enough or it just can't justify that price. The last row is uh, not usable for full-sized adults, so you'd be better off buying a Compass if you really uh, are looking for a practical five-seater. And uh, the kind of extra money that the that Jeep wants for the Meridian just doesn't fit in. Also, again, in terms of having a strong USP, it's just not there because you're now competing with the brands that are established, that have a higher want factor. And uh, the Meridian just didn't uh, fit that class. I mean, if it were cheaper, uh, significantly cheaper, it would have had a strong case for itself. But... At this price point, for what it is, uh, the Meridian, like the Scorpius, missed the mark, uh, not just for our top seven, but in general in the Indian market is what we believe. And finally, there's the Mercedes-Benz GLB. Now, the GLB is a three-row version of uh, Mercedes-Benz's uh, entry-level car, so to speak, in the SUV segment, the GLA. And the thing with the GLB is that maybe because it's an import, it is almost as expensive or slightly more than the GLC, which is a whole size bigger. Of course, the GLB has three rows, the GLC has two rows, but the last row on the GLB, in Mercedes-Benz's own words, is only fit for kids. So, uh, the it just doesn't justify the price that it is commanding or it demands uh, you know, being as close to the GLC. Now, the only good news for the GLB is that you cannot buy a GLC currently. The new uh, version of the GLC will come. So there is no GLC in the market and therefore the GLB still has uh, some sort of traction it can gain. But otherwise, the GLB, in terms of pricing and what the product is, uh, there's a big mismatch and uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, it makes it uh, to our miss the mark list instead of the best of 2022. And before you go, please do like and subscribe to our channel and of course comment and tell us what you thought about our list of best cars and the cars that missed the mark. If you feel differently, please do write in and tell us and uh, that's the best way we can communicate with you. And uh, thank you so much for watching.